One of the biggest wealth transfers in history is currently underway, and the recipients of that transfer are a little demographic group called the Millennials. Millennials and their spending habits have been a major topic of discussion over the last few years. Worries around failing to save adequately for their future retirement, their inability to get on the property ladder, having way, way too much debt from student loans and credit cards and all other fun kind of stuff, and of course, their crippling addiction to smashed avocados on toast. These have all been floated as reasons to be concerned about the financial future of the millennial demographic. But this group is set to be the recipients of one of the largest wealth transfers in history. Estimates are that boomers will be passing down up to $68 trillion in wealth. Yes, trillion with a capital T. Wowzers, that's a lot of money, and that's a lot of smashed avocado on toast. Time to buy avocados, guys. Now, what does this mean for Bitcoin? Everything and nothing. Oh, the insights of the Crypto Alert channel. You gotta love it. Well, we're gonna break this down for you and kind of try to dig in to what this actually might mean for the crypto markets. You see, we're talking about a major generational demographic shift here, macroeconomic stuff that goes way beyond Bitcoin. I know there's stuff that happens that's not Bitcoin related. It surprised me too when uh, I found out that there is something outside of Bitcoin world, but Apparently there is, and it's pretty weird. Anyway, we're going to be talking about some of that stuff and how it relates to the Bitcoin world, of course. The major factor is that we are now seeing millennials overtaking the baby boomers as the largest economically active generational cohort, which is actually a game changer for markets on the macro terms once again. And of course, for the financial services industry, more broadly, since millennials are behaving very, very differently economically from older generations. We can thank the internet a lot for a lot of these new behaviors. And while median household income for US millennials is now comparatively greater than at any other time in the last half century, but the challenges are certainly real and present to the long-term success of people from this generation. Wages are stagnant. Property is expensive. Student debt is out of control, particularly for people in the United States. Many people from this generation started off their working life in the ashes of the global financial crisis. Their gig economy jobs don't offer health insurance or a retirement plan. It's very problematic on a lot of levels. And of course, automation is increasingly going to threaten a wide range of jobs and potentially put millions of people out of work or at least dramatically change the way in which they earn their money. And with the nearly 11 year bull run in the stock market combined with quantitative easing, record low interest rates, the likelihood of a new crash is very real. Of a crash that will make the 2008 crash look like child's play. If that happens, that will mean that millennials will face the very real prospect of years more of grinding, uncertainty, and hardship, just as things are starting to get kind of okay. And you know what? No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. It's, it's tough, but it's true. Millennials are also the best educated generation in history who had the unfathomable good fortune to be born at the same time that the internet started to get big. The economy is changing rapidly, and the economy is changing fundamentally. And for those of you who are changing with it, there is unbelievable opportunity. In the U.S. alone, there are now 618,000 millennial millionaires. Sure, some of those got it from their, their parents and stuff like that, but a lot of them are making it. Capitalize on the trends of history. Do not be crushed by the trends of history. The doors are wide open for those who are willing to stop making excuses and be brave enough to break the mold, cut their own path, and secure their own destiny. Here are a few of my thoughts on how millennials can win in this economy. 
get a damn plan, man, and get laser focused on income generation and, of course, asset protection. Yes, buy Bitcoin. It's a crypto channel. Of course, you're buying Bitcoin. But you are being given the opportunity of a lifetime right now with Bitcoin because you're getting in on the ground floor of what may be the future currency of the internet. In fact, the entire crypto market is poised for just mind-boggling growth. Ethereum and a whole host of other cryptocurrencies can make life-changing money for many, many people. So there is that to consider. Also, please figure out ways to get multiple sources of income set up. Make money while you sleep, get it automated, right? And it's way easier than most people think it is to do. In terms of the crypto markets, you can check out BlockFi where you can earn interest on your Bitcoin and on your USD. And you get a sweet $10 as a sign up bonus. Crypto.com has better rates for USD lending and you get a $50 bonus after staking 50 MCO. Links to both of those down below in the description. But just getting passive income from providing liquidity to the crypto markets, probably not enough for having a good diverse range of incomes. Come on, man. We live in the freaking internet age. Monetize your passion. There is so much demand and so much potential for growth out there for content creators of all kinds of stuff. You can do an online shop. You could do art and collect royalties. You can flip stuff on eBay, seriously. The potential to make money online, it's mind boggling, absolutely mind boggling and anyone can do it. There are no barriers. Your average millionaire, by the way, has seven streams of income. How many do you have? If you want to be rich, if you want to be financially secure, behave like the rich and financially secure. You have got to automate your wealth generation because you know what? Banks are not going to do it for you. Also, I know I don't talk about it a lot here on the channel, but don't be afraid to buy stocks that generate real returns, especially, especially, by the way, S&P 500, all-time highs, right? There's probably going to be a serious market crash. Look to get in on the fiery depths of that. Buffett's got 130 billion on the side waiting to catch some of that action. So, you know, learn from the best, I suppose. Because to be honest, I wanna get some stocks in my portfolio too, but I'm a bit hesitant to buy the top of an 11 year bull run. And according to a report from Grayscale Investments Bitcoin Trust, which is a publicly tradable Bitcoin and cryptocurrency investment vehicle, millennials aren't actually afraid of buying stocks. And actually, Grayscale is among the top five equity holdings for millennials. Now, that's next to Amazon, Apple, Tesla, and Facebook. Gold, however, not very popular with millennials. And a very fascinating addition is that the average millennial portfolio has as much as 68% allocated to equities. Very, very interesting stuff. Now, aside from, you know, you're just your extra income streams, your side hustle and all that stuff, you obviously also have to get very, very serious about saving. Automate your saving, set a percentage of your income to be that me tax, and then stick to it. Don't dip into your me tax. That is money for future you, not now you. Another compelling number is that millennials save 36% more of their annual salaries compared to prior generations, which I think is actually pretty impressive. And um, I think also kind of counters some of those narratives that you hear about the millennial generation. Also, please, please don't buy dumb crap. And if you must buy dumb crap, then don't do it on credit, man. Seriously, what are you doing? Don't buy stuff, that kind of stuff on a credit card. If you have to burn your money, at least burn your real money, not debt money. Also realize that as a generation, Millennials have more mobility options than previous generations. So if your city is too expensive, just move. Seriously. If your country's too expensive, get up, move, go do something different, experience the world, experience your life. Being geographically free, oh, that is a big one. In fact, there are so many people out there that want that freedom to just be able to go where you want, when you want. That's a goal in of itself. 
The only thing stopping you is you and the excuses and barriers that you put in front of yourself. Also, do what you love to do. The only thing we know for certain is that we get one go, just one go in life. Is this a simulation? Will we be reincarnated? Is there a heaven out there? Nobody knows for certain. But we do know is that you can live and love your life now and here today. Do not wait until you are 65 to start living your life. Live your life now. And if you do do what you love to do to make your money, then chances are you won't want to retire when it comes time anyway because you're already just living your passion. And on the topic of millennials and retirement, retiring at 65 may not even be a realistic goal in 2046 when the oldest millennials turn 65. Given trends in Social Security and life expectancy, a lot of millennials may get some uncomfortable surprises. But hey, if you want to work yourself to death with a 9-to-5 job that you despise, you probably don't have to worry about retirement anyway. Because you'll be dead! Hashtag winning, hashtag millennial retirement, man. Just imagine working a job that you hate until they find you pants down on the toilet, dead from a heart attack, at work, after failing to return from a break, choked on your avocado toast, or just dying from a heart attack from having so much avocado toast during your life. Seriously, guys, avocado's great. I love them. <laughs> but seriously, if you plan this right, then when you do reach your later years, you are much more likely to be doing what you want to be doing and not what you have to be doing big difference and a very powerful difference. But you have got to take this into your own hands. Do not rely on your government to save you. Seriously, do not. Due to the economic situations changing at macro levels all over the world, citizens of a lot of countries are currently finding themselves unable to make ends meet because their pensions do not keep up with inflation and you see these dramatic moves that are happening in currencies and in economic powers and all this stuff and your money your fixed pension paid out in a certain amount of pesos or rubles or dollars whatever it might be that could be worth nothing in terms of purchasing power very very quickly it's happened to millions and millions of people all over the world people who followed the program People who did everything right, kept their nose to the grindstone, went and did their nine to five. Those people now live in grinding poverty, consumed by loneliness, crying themselves to sleep, counting the days until God takes their life only because they're too afraid to kill themselves. Dark lark. Very dark, man. That is no way to finish your damn life. I feel nothing but just it's, it's crushing. And I see that happen all over the world. Plan now for spending your later years actually enjoying your life. That doesn't have to be you. You don't want that to be you. Happiness, joy, connection, belonging, love, spending time with your kids and your grandkids or volunteering in your community. That is a life full of purpose and passion. But you have got to ensure your financial security for that to be able to happen. And you will ensure your happiness security if you can do that. Get those income streams coming. Don't wait to start. Start now. The sooner you start, the longer you have, the more it pays off over time. Get invested. And with those ever-increasing lifespans, the increasingly high costs of long-term health care, that may mean that your portfolio is going to have to last longer and stretch farther than one stop. But on the flip side, you get compounding interest for a longer time in your life. So that's, a, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> Also, let us not forget about the huge sums of money currently being spent on all the life-extending technologies and stuff like this. It's very exciting, actually. You flip it around and think, I can live for 120 years, right? Because that is the real prospect that in the next 20 to 30 to 40 years, we're going to see innovations arise that let people with enough money anyway, right, live to be well over 100 in healthful enough states anyway. Also remember that with current inflation rates, your expenses will double after about 25 years. 
Also keep in mind that an 8% annual return is really only a 6% annual return after 2% inflation. And that inflation rates may see drastic increases at any time. Could just happen like that. Now back to that $68 trillion in wealth that's going to be handed over to millennials. Obviously, all of that is going to be used to buy Bitcoin. We're going to the moon. Moon. <laughs> okay, but seriously, as we saw with the report from Grayscale that Bitcoin is very popular with millennials, I would suspect that we will indeed see much more investment coming into crypto over the next few years as some of that $68 trillion starts to change hands. Also, that $68 trillion, we're only talking about inheritance money here. I think that's something really important to point out. This is not about the money and the opportunities that millennials are making for themselves right now. They don't need their parents' money. They're going to get it too, right? But it's not all going to come from that. Their median incomes are higher. Their saving rates are higher. They're the best educated generation in history. And their potential is greater than any generation before them for making and creating wealth in innovative ways. And yes, that generation is investing in Bitcoin. That generation has a love for Bitcoin and is very popular amongst that generation. So I feel like betting against Bitcoin it's like betting against an entire generation, which seems crazy to me personally. But you will let me know your opinion on this topic down below in the comment section. As always, you guys freaking rock. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Seriously, seriously awesome. I love you. So thank you so much. And if you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button. Yeah, yeah. If you're still watching the video, that is thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> guys, really great times. Thank you so much. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.